introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Kim Bolton wears multiple hats in the School of Environmental Sciences. She is a lab manager as well as a professor. Uh, she teaches a number of um, chemistry and environmental chemistry courses. And uh, when I was going through my degree, she was one of my favorite uh, professors and really taught me, uh, well, gave me all the tools to understand chemistry. And I think it's her enthusiasm that really connects her to the students. So uh, if, you have, if you have questions, save them to the end for Kim. And uh, please join me in welcoming Kim Bolton. Uh, uh, 
kinetics. We try and use environmental examples. Um, so we use examples from acid, uh, from acid rain, ozone depletion, photochemical smog. Similar structure, lectures and labs. Um, but I just want to uh, talk about the last point. This course no longer exists. <laughs> It, it ran for a number of years. I taught it for probably three or four years, and there was a um, professor before me that taught it for a number of years as well. So I, I'm not exactly sure the number of years, but it no longer exists because everybody started to realize that we weren't really do, doing the students much of a favor. At the end of the day, can, can you go to the next slide? Oh, sorry, I was going to do a little overview first. Sorry, let me just finish this and then I'll get to the overview. Um, so my, my first year experience is, it, is with this course. I'm going to talk quite a bit about that course. Next slide. I also have um, first year chemistry experience. I teach introductory chemistry, which essentially is grade 12 chemistry. Um, believe it or not, there's a number of students going into science at university, and a number, close to 100 every year, who don't have grade 12 chem. I'm not exactly sure why that is, maybe you can explain that to me. But they take, um, they have to take grade 12 chem before they take the two courses. I teach that as a distance education format. I can talk a little bit about that as well. There are no labs in that course. I also teach a liberal arts type chemistry, so chemistry for non-science students. Also no labs. But this course was, um, was developed really for um, the hotel and food administration students. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the University of Wealth, but we have a very big hotel and food administration program. One of the courses they take in their second year is essentially a food chemistry course. And so the idea was they needed a little bit of chemistry to help them understand food chemistry. So I'll teach that, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, so back to the introduction to environmental chemistry. <coughs> This is essentially what I taught. I just wanted to show you because I thought you might find this interesting. So I taught stoichiometry, essentially enthalpy, energetics, um, gases in the atmosphere, kinetics, um, gaseous equilibria, acids and bases, solubility, free energy, and electrochemistry. So those are all topics that you would find in a standard first year university chemistry course. But you'll also notice that there are other topics that we have, that we put in to make it more of an environmental chemistry course. So we put in water, we put in a unit on acid rain, we put in a unit on stratospheric ozone depletion. We talk about we talk about uh, global warming and climate change, up to the gases, and we put in a unit on metals and lime. The problem, of course, is that we have to take stuff out. In order to put that in, we have to take stuff out. So things, if you if you teach chemistry, you'll notice right away, there's nothing on chemical bonding there. So the whole unit on chemical bonding, Lewis structures, Vesper diagrams, gone. Um, and we also took out the entire unit on organic chemistry. So there's no organic chemistry in this course. So what that meant was that these environmental science students, if they were going um, to continue in the sort of environmental chemistry, they needed to take another course to give them that background. So that was one of the reasons that this didn't quite work the way I think they wanted it to work. Um, and the other, we, and we can discuss this afterwards if you want, the other reason I don't think it quite worked is because it really was chemistry with a few environmental science examples instead. There wasn't a real, there wasn't a, an idea of completely changing the way the course was taught. There was no pedagogical uh, change in this course. So eventually they stopped running it. Now the environmental science students are back with the masses, the 1500 or 2000 